My laboratory studies breast cancer metastasis. Metastasis is the process by which cancer cells acquire the ability to spread throughout the body, and it's what makes cancer so devastating to patients. All right, let's have some fun. Let's see what we can find in this box. Okay, so, oh good, we have some Play-Doh. Fortunately, my daughter Ellie has kept me in practice and how to, how to work with this. Okay, so let's say there's two types of breast cancer. There's red and blue. And that the red breast cancer is actually has worse patient outcomes. It means, on average, patients are, gonna, are going to have more metastases and they're gonna have a shorter lifespan if they're diagnosed with a red tumor than if they're diagnosed with a blue tumor. What does that mean? It means somehow this tumor is changing in a way that cells are able to escape away from the primary tumor and actually set up in the lungs. Right? And that's really the dangerous thing that happens. It, it can colonize or establish a, another tumor in the brain or in the bones or in the lungs. And what we also find is that with the blue tumors, which we're saying on average the patients do well, you know what, some of the time those still become invasive, cells start leaving that primary tumor. They get away and they're able to establish a metastasis in the lungs. Right? And what we really care about is understanding how that works. How do the cells in a breast tumor actually acquire the ability to spread through the body? So we used to think of them as being, okay, this is a red tumor, this is a blue tumor, right? and that all the cells in that tumor were pretty much the same. But it turns out it's not really true, that there's all sorts of different cells in the blue tumor, and there's all sorts of different cells in the red tumor. The question is, which of these are important? Which of these cells are really the ones that are leading that invasion process and allowing the tumor to set up in a distant site? Was it the green cell? Or was it the brown cell? Right, we didn't know how that worked. So we actually developed microscopes that allow us to watch this process in real time. We can actually go there and take videos of real human tumors as they're invading. What we found was that in these red tumors, the cells that are at the front, they all express this yellow gene. But we decided, let's just check, right? Let's see in the blue tumors, right, what's going on. And then we made a surprising discovery. The cells that were leading invasion there, they were also yellow. We got even more excited then. We said, okay, wait a minute, this might be something more general. This might not just be about the red tumors and how this specific red tumor learns to invade. It might actually be something about how all breast tumors learn to invade. So what we did is we took a very different type of breast cancer and it's also invading. So now we had red, white, and blue breast cancer. And when we came in here and we said, okay, what's going on? Are those cells at the front expressing the yellow gene? Sure enough, they were. I have to say, this is what we work for, right? We work in the lab all the time, right? We're here. People I have are some of the smartest people in the world. And what they're doing is they're trying to understand how this works. And it's, it's, it's a hard process, it's a slow process. And a lot of days, the experiments don't work. And then every once in a while, you get one of these insights where you're like, we might be onto something, right? This might be important. Across these really different types of tumors, there is a common biology, right? We're seeing the same types of genes being expressed in the cells that were leading invasion, right? So we said, okay, what's going on here? Is this something that's just correlating, right? It's just always in the wrong place at the wrong time, but it's not part of the action. Or is, are these cells really the ones that are, that are causing the destruction of the normal tissue and leading to the, the spread to distant organs? There's only one way to test that. We have to be able to turn the gene off. As soon as we know the name of the gene, literally, like four weeks later, we have the tools available to us that allow us to turn it off. So we can do this. And what we found is that it couldn't invade anymore. If we can turn off this gene in a patient, maybe we can stop the spread of metastatic breast cancer. If the tumors are there, but they're not spreading, surgeons are actually really good at coming in, removing that tumor, and helping that patient live a long, healthy life. So we're working now with engineers, we're working with um, oncologists, we're working with pathologists to really try to understand how do we take these laboratory insights and develop new therapies for patients who currently have breast cancer. Here's the thing, cancer's a really devastating disease. So the faster we can go, the more patients we can help. There's a lot of people today with metastatic breast cancer, so we don't want to just solve this eventually. I don't want to solve this as an old man. We want to solve this now. We want to figure out how this works, and that takes money. It takes a lot of money, actually. So what enables us to do our research, to test our ideas, is a partnership between the U.S. government, 
cancer foundations, and philanthropic individuals. It's only by bringing together all three of these sources that we're able to work as quick as we want to try to understand how cancer works and how we can stop it. Thank you.